What is going on, guys? Thank you so very much for joining me right here on Off The Script. I got a little bit of extra for you. It is April 23rd, 2023. I am JD from New York, as always, coming to you from the OTS venue. Thank you guys so very much for joining me on your Sunday afternoons, wherever you may be. We got a little bit of Bill Goldberg to talk about. We got a little bit of AJ Styles to talk about news on his potential return to the WWE. We got news on Naomi. Is she staying with the WWE or is she leaving after fans are now speculating about her canceling her trademark for the name Trinity Star? We'll also go over the king and queen of the ring. Why WWE internally canceled what I was very much looking forward to in the king of the ring tournament for 2023 and a big pitch for Big E and him chasing Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Yes, Big E on his way back to the WWE. We got all that and so much more right here on Off The Script. You guys know the deal. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys want the latest in WWE and AEW news. And also follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Let's start off with Goldberg, man. I talked about Goldberg on the podcast on Thursday when we were live for episode 474. We talked about his reported Four City Mega Tour retirement tour. He wants to retire and he wants to go out on his own terms. He had a handshake agreement with Vince McMahon that, to the surprise of nobody, Vince McMahon went back on. And he was very angry with Vince McMahon. Now he's a free agent. And the speculation is that Bill Goldberg will eventually end up in AEW. A lot of people are pinpointing Goldberg to be at that Wembley show on August 27th for AEW All In. Now, no matter what you feel about Bill Goldberg, you guys know how I feel about Bill Goldberg. You guys know how I feel. He is greedy and undeserving and basically delusional at this point. He said that he doesn't think what he did in WWE should be the end. Nobody should be telling him that that is it for him, and he deserves a lot more, a lot better to go out on. I decided, well, maybe we should have thought that same thing about Bray Wyatt before you buried him in fucking Saudi Arabia. Maybe we should have thought better, Bill, about what you did to Bret the Hitman Hart. Did Bret Hart deserve the way he went out? I don't think so. So, yes, there is backlash about Bill Goldberg. To add to the greediness of what Bill Goldberg is, it was reported this weekend that Bill Goldberg got paid $2 million each for his Saudi Arabia matches with WWE. But... I thought WWE really didn't take care of what you got going on there, Bill. I mean, $2 million each for those matches where you basically killed The Undertaker, almost killed The Undertaker. Could have been a catastrophic event there. And then a very, very underwhelming match with Bobby Lashley, I believe, were the two. $2 million each for subpar performances, Bill. It's a great job there, man. i never seen somebody do so little work and then get paid so much money. While appearing on 93.7 The Ticket, Goldberg stated that he's leaning towards doing a four-city tour, as you guys know. And then Meltzer in The Observer mentioned that AEW might not offer the kind of money per match that he was making in WWE, but Goldberg was making $2 million each for Saudi matches, and for AEW, that kind of money per match simply isn't cost-effective. Now, I don't know how much Tony Khan is going to offer up for a Bill Goldberg or for the services of Bill Goldberg. Maybe at the end of his run here, maybe it really won't be about the money, but I don't really see that being the case. You know, Bill, Bill is going to want to come on in and get paid. He's going he's gonna to reap the benefits at this early age, man. He's going to suck Tony Khan dry. So that's another thing that Tony Khan has to look out for. I don't really care about this. I see a bunch of geeks tweeting about, oh, yeah, AEW and Tony Khan, they'll take care of Bill Goldberg. They treated their legends right. They used their legends right. This isn't simply some kind of legend, man. This is Bill Goldberg. 
somebody that has not done the right business in a very long time and somebody that only thinks about himself. Not very excited about Bill, Bill Goldberg coming on into AEW because I just genuinely don't trust him and I don't genuinely trust him to do the right thing. Big match for Big E being pitched internally for his return. Now, on Friday Night SmackDown, Xavier Woods wrestled for the Intercontinental Championship in a losing effort, obviously, against Gunther on SmackDown. And according to a new report, this is not the end for the New Day and Imperium. Now, we don't know what's going to happen with the draft. They could be drafted to separate shows. The New Day on one show, Imperium on the other. But according to a new report from WRKD Wrestling, this new insider wrestling account on Twitter, they said Woods faces off against Gunther on SmackDown, and at some point, the plan will be for the New Day to continue their feud with Imperium. That is Fabian Eichner, that is Marcel Bartel, and Gunther, or Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser right now. I still call them by their NXT names because I just missed their NXT presentation. The plan is for Imperium to continue to feud with New Day once Kofi Kingston and Big E are cleared. And Big E versus Gunther would be the centerpiece for this New Day Imperium feud. There's no word on whether this will happen on WWE television concrete. There's no word on whether either of them will pop up on WWE television, Kofi Kingston and Big E. But it is interesting that there are internal plans right now for Big E, which is a good thing. To me, reading that, it means that the WWE is set on clearing him when he is ready to go. And that WWE already has it in the back of their minds that Big E is going to make a full recovery if there are already internal plans in place for him on television when he gets back. That's a great thing. Considering now that there's a fear that he still might not be able to return to the ring after being dropped on the back of his head by Ridge Holland last year, legitimately a year ago. WRKD Wrestling tweeted, despite a loss to Gunther on SmackDown, one long-term backstage pitch has been Xavier Woods and a fully healed Big E and Kofi Kingston. The New Day feuding with Imperium once the New Day are ready to return. The centerpiece for the feud would be Big E facing Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. I don't mind the feud. I don't mind that match. But I don't want that to be for the Intercontinental title. I don't. I don't want it to be a situation where Gunther is still the Intercontinental Champion and then we drop the Intercontinental Championship from Gunther to Big E as some sort of welcome back prize, as some sort of pity prize because of what had happened. The Intercontinental title does not deserve that. Big E does not deserve that. And Gunther does not deserve that. That's what I'm afraid of. Some of you may be thinking, well, Big E would be a great Intercontinental Champion. We've been there, done that. There are a ton of other names that I'd love to see Gunther drop the Intercontinental title to, and none of them focus around Big E. I'm sorry. I'm still Team Sheamus. I don't know about you guys. I'm still Team Sheamus. And with the reports of WWE possibly calling up Ilya Dragunov from NXT and bringing Pete Dunne back to television with the name Pete Dunne and abandoning the Butch name and then bringing up a Tyler Bate, I'd even take those guys in a feud with Gunther because they've all been in the ring with Gunther and have delivered match classics with Gunther. I take those guys over Big E. I don't want it to be a pity prize. I don't want it to be a pity party for Big E. I'll take the match one-on-one or I'll take the match in some sort of trios, you know, feud between the two factions, but I don't want to see that match for the title. And and by by all means, you guys may think differently, Gunther may not even be the Intercontinental Champion when Big E is set to return to TV anyway. So this is very far out. This is very cloudy. We don't know when Big E's going to make his television return. And by that time, I think Gunther probably will have lost the Intercontinental title and will be on to bigger and better things because you know he's going to be thrusted right into the main event scene and he's going to be vying for those one those big world championships, whether it's going to be a unified title or if it's going to be individual titles, whether it's going to be the WWE 
or the Universal Championship. So, I, I mean, it's way too early to tell what's going on, but a New Day Imperium feud, trios, I'm all over that, man. I would take that in a heartbeat. I think that would be great for both teams. The New Day needs something to reinvigorate themselves, and I think that would be great because Gunther right now, man, nobody right now is as hot. Besides Roman Reigns, nobody is as hot as Gunther right now in WWE. AJ Styles. Speaking of injuries, AJ Styles is still not ready to return from his ankle injury that he suffered in a house show or at a house show in Hershey, Pennsylvania on December 29th. There are reports from PW Insider that AJ Styles is close to returning to WWE TV, but not yet. They are reporting that Styles was not around for WrestleMania weekend, and the latest on him is that it's a matter of, of him being cleared. So he's probably got to go through some rehabilitation, continued rehabilitation. WWE's got to look at him, and they want to monitor him closely. The reason why it doesn't look like right now he's ready to come back is because per PW Insider, there's been no word on that he's been training at the Performance Center in Orlando. WWE typically sends talents there just before they are cleared and ready to return to TV. That doesn't really mean much of anything. I'm not going to really take that as, oh my God, AJ Styles is not ready to come back. He's not anywhere close to coming back to WWE television. Uh, he could be training on his own. He could be training with his own doctors. WWE might want to keep it a surprise for him in the draft. He, we may see him on Friday. We may see him on Monday. WWE's been very hush-hush about, you know, moving people up from NXT and They've hired a bunch of talent that we haven't even seen make their debut on television yet. WWE may be loading up the surprises for the WWE draft. And when AJ comes out, it'll be a big pop. So I'm not really taking this for what PW Insider is reporting as serious. Uh, I do think that if AJ Styles is ready to come back, they probably would end up saving him as a surprise for the WWE draft. But my God, man, I'll tell you this right now. Does Monday Night Raw miss AJ Styles? Absolutely. Absolutely. AJ Styles being on television gives WWE another main event guy. AJ Styles being on television gives the club something to do. Holy shit. I mean, it's crazy how Gallows and Anderson haven't really done much of anything in WWE uh, since AJ Styles went down with injury. I mean, they've been off television basically the entire time he's been out. If I'm Vince McMahon, I'm looking at that. I'm saying, what the fuck are these guys doing back here if we're not using them? So they are probably hoping that AJ Styles gets back to television. And I really hope with the draft, as far as they are concerned, Triple H or whoever's in charge here with this thing gets the tag team division back in place and we get some sort of tag team division and they are a nice, decent addition to the tag team division. There's still a comparable tag team in WWE. And with AJ, they are over. It's going to be difficult without AJ, but I think all of them back together on TV would be best for business, especially for Monday Night Raw right now, which is, you know, in that in that feel of same old shit now, uh, weekly on, on USA Network. Backstage news on why WWE canceled the King and Queen of the Ring for Night of Champions. Now, no matter what Meltzer says here, it's probably not the case, but WWE changed the name for one very specific reason. Dave Meltzer reported in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that the reason WWE changed the name to Night of Champions, replacing King and Queen of the Ring, will become clear following the Backlash Premium Live event next month in Puerto Rico. That's all he had to say on it. Regarding the reason why the May 27th show in Saudi Arabia was changed from King and Queen of the Ring to Night of Champions was a booking decision. We were told it will become obvious why after the Puerto Rico show, and in the build to the show, Meltzer wrote. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. I am going to let you guys in on something that I have been feeling after we watched SmackDown on Friday, and WWE gave us this ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous match of Seth Rollins and Omos. Something, something was decided upon for why this match was made. I'm just going to throw this out there. We all know Night of Champions is going to be centered around Roman Reigns. We all know that. WWE will have Roman Reigns reach a thousand days on that day, 
Night of Champions. They centered the entire name around Roman Reigns and his 1,000 days as Universal Champion. We all know this. There has been an ongoing rumor. I don't know where it got started. I don't know who had stated it first, but I pray to God it does not happen. And before I tell you what the rumor is, it could really go one way or the other in this. WWE announced on Friday for absolutely no reason, no story. They've never crossed paths. I don't even think they know each other. I mean, this was, ma- this was made out of sheer randomness. Vince McMahon was like, we need this match at Backlash, pal. Omos is wrestling Seth Rollins at Backlash. No reason why the match is happening. They've never been in a ring together. I don't know why the match is happening. I'm making a prediction right now. This is not news. This is not me telling you this is what it is. I have a feeling that this match is going to mean a lot more than people realize going into Backlash and going into uh, Night of Champions. I think whoever wins this match, seriously, I think whoever wins this match challenges Roman Reigns at Night of Champions for the Undisputed Championship. Now, clearly, clearly, the option here for best choice would be Seth Rollins because of their history with The Shield, because Rollins deserves the opportunity, and because it just makes sense. I don't like it because it's going to be a one-off and Roman Reigns is not losing the championships to anybody but Cody Rhodes. I don't want Rollins to be used in that situation as, hey, man, we need you to do this guy a favor, man. We need you to go to Saudi Arabia and wrestle this guy in an important match. And you're not going to win the championships, man. But we love you. We love you, Seth, man. We we need you, man. You're a team player, right? You're a team player. I I don't want it to be that. I don't want it to be that. Because he doesn't deserve that. He doesn't. I could see that. Fans would like that. I think they'd get a kick out of that with the throwback to the Shield and their history and all that stuff. It would probably make sense. There's no better guy right now, uh, you know, because you can't do Cody because that's going to happen at SummerSlam. There's no better guy right now to be, you know what, Roman Reigns, a thousand days. Who do we put him in the ring with? Seth. Seth Rollins. There you go. It makes sense, right? Or... WWE could go the easy route. Don't have to worry about anything. They'll give Omos a big win over Seth Rollins. They'll have him go into Saudi Arabia. They'll build a program. Roman would take down the giant Omos, the big man Omos. A thousand days, they'll build up something about that match and make it feel super special, even though we know it's not. And Roman will take down Omos for a thousand days. There's absolutely no liability there. There's no worry. Omos is not going to beat Roman. And WWE can go in and out, nice and safe, get Roman a thousand days, and move on to the next program that he's got, which hopefully will be against Cody Rhodes at SummerSlam. Again, I don't want to say that it is what it is, but there's got to be a fucking reason why this match was made. There's got to be. This entire event is built around Roman. And this match, I feel, is going to be indicative of what happens with Roman. It's just my prediction. Just my prediction. Let me know what you guys think about that. But Knight of Champions, no longer King of the Ring because of Roman Reigns. The draft is on Friday. We got the WWE draft starting on Friday. It will continue on Monday. And NXT stars will be moving up to the main roster. As Michael Cole said on Friday, once again, that NXT will be a part of the draft. Just adding on to what Triple H has already stated about the draft. PW Insider Elite reports that former WWE NXT UK champion Ilya Dragunov has now been pitched as someone to get called up and be used on SmackDown During the draft, Ilya Dragunov joins now rumored names for a call-up in Pretty Deadly, Zoe Stark, Tiffany Stratton, uh, Caden Carter and Katana Chance, Cameron Grimes, Braun Breaker, Grayson Waller, Roxanne Perez. We could see any of these names get called up to the main roster. Tyler Bate was another one. Tyler Bate had that great match with Dolph Ziggler on main event. People were raving about it. Then it got word back to WWE. Maybe we should call this guy up. He's been fucking ready for years. Ilya Dragunov's ready to go. I don't know what the fuck he's doing down on that baby show, that Nickelodeon-like fucking show on Tuesday night. I don't know. He doesn't deserve to be down there. 
Half the fucking people I mentioned don't even deserve to be down there. Ilya Dragunov now pitched to be called up to SmackDown during the draft. Good. Good. Pretty deadly seems to be ready after multiple NXT tag team title reigns in UK and on NXT here in the United States. Grimes has been ready for a while. He's been on fucking TV forever. Transformed his body. He looks fucking incredible. He's been in limbo creatively. They didn't bring him back to NXT. They wanted to call him back up to the main roster. He's ready to go. Hopefully they bring him back under that uh, rich boy, uh, southern boy gimmick. I thought that was fantastic. WWE's been high on Zoe Stark. Shawn Michaels loves Zoe Stark. She's been ready for an opportunity. And the women's roster absolutely needs some fucking momentum. Zoe Stark could be that, man. They need some hard-hitting fucking just difference makers in that division. Tiffany Stratton. And Roxanne Perez and a Zoe Star, Caden Carter, Katana Chance, they could all add that to the women's division. So it's going to be very interesting to see where the NXT talent uh, is come Friday and then on into Monday for the WWE draft. Uh, we could see a lot of call ups on Friday and into Monday with the draft. And I, I hope we do. I really do. I, I think WWE television needs a shot in the arm because right now, coming out of WrestleMania, the momentum seemingly has just faded away. There is nothing to really sink your teeth into right now on WWE television. Hopefully that changes with the draft. There's a new report from Fightful and PW Insider Elite about Warner Brothers Discovery having interest in WWE programming. Now, I I talked about this on Thursday when we were live on episode 474. Um, There was a interview with James Andrew Miller who also worked for the Washington Post and was the executive vice president of original programming for USA Network. He was interviewed by Sports Illustrated, and he had heard of interest in WWE programming from some people over at Warner Brothers Discovery. Miller expressed that he wouldn't be surprised whether Warner Brothers Discovery wanted a slice of the WWE pie, despite having media rights for AEW content. Now, this is coming from Mike Johnson of PW Insider. There were a lot of people within the WWE circle whose ears immediately perked up after Miller's comments were made and it got around to social media. Despite questioning whether this is a real possibility or if it's just speculation, they had several top WWE executives ask them whether they had heard anything from the Warner Brothers side regarding their interest in the company's content. PW Insider has not heard anything, but that doesn't mean there's not, and it hasn't been addressed behind closed doors. Although there's been speculation on AEW's deal, it will possibly run through 2024. It is believed internally that the deal with Warner Brothers goes through the end of this year and not 2024. All accounts are believed that Warner Brothers are currently happy with AEW content on their networks with a new Saturday night show reportedly set to debut on June 17th, which will see CM Punk as the face of the company. Meanwhile, it's also believed that NBC Universal has an exclusive window to negotiate a new deal with WWE first. If a deal hasn't been reached with Comcast, then the company can talk with anybody for media rights in regards to Monday Night Raw. Peacock has the rights to the WWE Network and their premium live events through 2026. So that's not going anywhere. And there's no confirmation on talks between WWE and Warner Brothers Discovery. WWE executives' ears perked up when they heard this news that Warner Brothers Discovery may be interested in WWE programming. Why would that be if they're happy with USA Network? Why would that be if they're happy with The money that they're making from NBCU on USA Network, they've been a family friend to the fucking company for years. That is their home. But their ears perked up immediately when Warner Brothers Discovery and the rumors of them wanting WWE programming on their networks started to make rounds on social media. The only reason why their ears perked up is because what is another way we can end AEW? What is another way we can stick the fork in AEW and make them fucking squirm and make them suffer? <laughs> we want to make them suffer. <laughs> it's exactly what WWE's thinking. It's exactly what WWE's thinking, man. Their ears perked up. Why? 
Because they want to end AEW and they want to make life absolutely fucking miserable for Tony Khan. That is the only reason. Do they need to be on Warner Brothers Discovery? No. Does Warner Brothers Discovery even have the fucking funds to afford WWE at this point with their uh, bills? Apparently, they're not doing too well either. So I don't really understand what, what, what the big deal is here, man. As soon as I read, ears perked up. I'm like, yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why. Then there was an update on all this. Fightful Select put out this on Saturday evening. This was obviously all based on the information that we all know from the Sports Illustrated article. Several WWE higher-ups, according to Fightful, had inquired as to whether or not that's something people in the industry have heard and noted that they had not heard about this whatsoever. Fightful's told that there haven't been any conversations regarding WWE with Warner Brothers Discovery. There have been conversations with several places that serve as possibilities, however... On the other side, sources at Warner Brothers Discovery actually tell us the opposite. There was nothing ill of WWE noted in our conversations, but they indicated that Warner Brothers Discovery is gearing up to substantially expand their relationship with AEW from both a financial and content perspective. That will become evident soon. It was hinted that this involves the upcoming Collision show as well as more possible content. Obviously, they're giving AEW another two hours. They're in bed with AEW. AEW from both a financial and content perspective. Financial meaning that they're going to be renegotiating with AEW for a new TV rights deal that will pay AEW much, much, much more than what they're making right now. And they are getting this new show on Saturday night that will be focused and centered around CM Punk. AEW is not going anywhere. They're going to be with Warner for years and years and years to come. The death of AEW has been overly exaggerated. WWE wishes upon a star every night for the death of AEW. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Whether you want to admit it or not, they are right. They are best for business in the, in the wrestling industry. WWE has got, has got their own fucking problems. They got their own problems. They got budget cuts looming. They got a roster that's fucking absolutely terrified, walking on eggshells about what the fuck is to come there with $50 million to $100 million in budgets coming because Nick Khan is out here st stating that such is going to happen. Meanwhile, he's lying to everybody. Uh, office cuts, office cuts, motherfucker. You're not making $100 million in office cuts and, and then not looking at the roster. Give me a fucking break. WWE's got their own fucking problems. Them being on Warner Brothers Discovery or them landing on Warner Brothers Discovery should be the least of their concerns. Naomi, New Japan reportedly wants to bring in Naomi. Bushi Road wants Naomi. Real name Trinity Fatu remains on the sidelines following her WWE departure. Last month, Naomi posted an ad for her WrestleCon appearance earlier this month. And in the comments, a user asked her if she was still in WWE. And Naomi responded, and I quote, saying, no, friend. She's no longer with WWE. This seemingly confirmed her WWE departure after walking out last year due to creative differences alongside Mercedes Monet. Now, Mercedes got her WWE release and signed with Bushiroad, which is the parent company for New Japan Pro Wrestling and Stardom, earlier this year. She's making waves and doing her thing, and I'm very proud of her. I, I think she's doing great with what she's doing right now. Naomi recently filed for a trademark that seemingly was to be her new ring name. Dave Meltzer reported in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that New Japan and Stardom were interested in bringing in Naomi, but money was the deciding factor to not make the deal happen as the parent company is trying to cut costs where possible due to New Japan's declines related to the pandemic. Now, this comes at a time when Mercedes Monet is in talks for contract extension, and they're obviously going to be paying her maybe more than what they originally gave her. Who knows? But if, if you're willing to sit down with Mercedes and maybe give her a little bit more than what you originally offered her, is it really about the budget that you're looking to cut? I, I don't think so. I, I think, honestly, if you want to give Mercedes what she wants and sign her long-term, 
however long you want to bring her in for, and then you want to bring in Trinity and, and then have them do their thing together. I mean, th they're going to be making more money off of them as an act, them together and them in the same company than they would if she was not in the company. You're going to recoup the money you get back that you want to give Trinity. I don't really understand this. The logic here is, well, let her go, even though we want her, but we're not gonna get, we're not gonna bring her in because she's asking too much money. We, we don't want to bring her in. We got we gotta be cost effective. I, I mean, you're on the ver you got the the you right now they got the best female professional wrestler in the world, in Mercedes. You don't want to bring in Trinity. You don't want to bring in Trinity and make them an act for Bushi Road. I don't, I don't really get that. To make money, you gotta spend money. This is a big name free agent. This is not some rinky dink fucking no name. Nobody knows who she is free agent. She's going to make an immediate impact if you bring her in, just like Mercedes did. Look at what happened to them. Look at the impact that they made leaving WWE the way that they did standing up for themselves. You don't think everybody's going to be all over that? There was interest in Mercedes in her first match and continues to be interest in Mercedes in whatever she does. You don't think that's going to happen with Trinity? I think that's a foolish move by Bushiroad, to be quite honest with you. Now, because of this, obviously Melcher talked about this. Because of all this news, Trinity had to come out and state that this is not true. The budget cost, the budget cuts, and the reason why Bushiroad did not want to bring her in because of being cost effective is not true. Now, there was another news report about Trinity canceling the trademark for Trinity Star. Now, Trinity fought to was her real name. She had gone out there and trademarked Trinity Star, and a lot of people are now making speculations about, well, maybe she's going to end up back in WWE. Maybe she goes back to WWE. That's the reason why she canceled the trademark for Trinity Star. That doesn't mean anything. Maybe she's going with a different name that's not Trinity Star, and she canceled this trademark to go with something else. Maybe she doesn't want to wrestle. Maybe she says, you know what? I'm just going to step away and I'm not going to wrestle. I don't need to wrestle. Maybe she goes back to WWE. Nobody knows. Everybody's making blind speculation about what she's going to end up doing. Meanwhile, nobody knows a fucking thing. She's got people talking, though. So whatever she ends up doing, you got Naomi, you got Trinity in your fucking podcast, you got Trinity's name in your mouth and in your headlines and on your fucking social media feeds, that's all, that's all she wants. That's all she cares about. She's winning either way. It doesn't really matter. Now, the last time we saw her, she was with the Ring of Honor crew for Supercard of Honor. I don't know what's going to happen there. She could end up in AEW. We don't know. She could end up in AEW doing something with Mercedes for all we know, under a different alias, under a different name. We don't know. But she already dumbed this down. I'm not going to Bushy Road right now, but it's not for the reasons Dave Meltzer stated. It's not because they wanted to be budget cut cost effective. So we don't know. She canceled the trademark. It could be any one of those reasons. We don't know. We don't know. Blind, blind, blind speculation, man. I hope for the best. I really do wish we see her back on television no matter where she wants to end up going. And just like Mercedes... We're going to support Trinity because of the way that they handled themselves and they stood up for themselves, man. There is no greater respect from me for what those two women did uh, when they did it to Vince and John Laurinaitis in WWE. Thank you guys very much, man. That's all the news I got for you on this Sunday afternoon. Glad to wrap up your weekly news right here on Off The Script. Please follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Go and check out all the other content on the channel. Plenty of it. And let's try for 1,000 likes minimum today on OTS. Next time you see me, I'll be live Monday night, right after Monday Night Raw. We got one week to prep for the draft. Monday Night Raw looks like the drizzling shits, but we'll be here in the venue to cover it, as always, right here on Off The Script, guys. See you guys on Monday. Enjoy your Sundays. and We'll be right, right, right back here on Monday Night Raw for... The raw review right here on Off The Script. I'll see you guys later.